Hello, this is Ion Port, proudly brought to you by West Blue Consulting, Ghana Oil Company Limited, and Ghana Community Network Services. Media Partner is a business and financial times. And people, this week we are taking you all the way to Bamako in Mali because that's where the seventh uh, annual conference of the Borderless Alliance uh, took place in the past week. And, you know, stakeholders gathered to deliberate on how to improve the transit trade, for instance, and also ensure a very smooth corridor where transit goods can be carted to the uh, landlocked countries. A number of issues came up. Take a listen. Borderless Alliance has held its 7th annual regional conference in Bamako, Mali to deliberate on securing corridor management for improved trade and transport in West Africa. Borderless Alliance is a public-private platform that interacts with all stakeholders at the various levels of trade and transport industry to facilitate optimum production across the African borders. The conference therefore sought to address the contemporary challenges in the trade and transport business within the West African sub-region. Stakeholders present at the meeting constituted private and public advocacy groups of the ports, maritime, transit and transshipment business, as well as representatives of public agencies involved in international trade across West Africa and Africa in general. The stakeholders shared their concerns geared towards achieving efficient corridor management for improved trade and transport in West Africa. Issues raised at the conference included a call for reduction in road barriers and security checkpoints on the Ghanaian corridor. Participating ports were urged to put in place measures to reduce cargo dwell time as that would inure to the benefit of importers. Again, it was agreed that there should be uniform application of the axle load regime in the region. The Ghanaian ambassador to Burkina Faso raised concern about the non-compliance of the Francophone countries to implement the axle load policy. He said it has served as an injustice to Ghana, which has complied with the implementation of the policy since 2009. The ECOWAS protocol on axle load. You know, some countries are implementing the protocol. For example, Ghana is implementing this protocol. But a lot more, you know, countries in the sub-region, especially the Francophones, are not implementing the protocol. And it's detrimental to those who are implementing the protocol. Because the, uh, you know, operators are running away from our routes to the other, other routes where the, the protocol is not being implemented. Recommendations made at the conference were that there should be a single insurance document to provide insurance cover for truck drivers operating along the corridor. Actors should be sensitized on their obligations and rights to avoid unnecessary harassment along the corridor. There should be harmonized procedures along the borders and also create awareness among public servants along the borders. Other recommendations included encouraging government to intensify the creation of infrastructure like roads, rail, warehousing, etc. to facilitate trade in the region, emulate best practices of the Northern Corridor by establishing freight truck parks attached with well centers at strategic locations along the corridors for corridor users, and collaboration among custom officials with efficient communication modes in countries in the region to facilitate trade and movement of goods. The Borderless Conference was highly patronized by Ghana as a country pivotal to the transit trade in the West African sub-region. Representatives from the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Ghana Shippers Authority, contributed to optimizing the transit trade. So a couple of days ago, if you recall, Customs nabbed uh, about six trucks that were carrying about six containers that had been declared to go to the uh, neighboring countries, the transit countries, uh, Burkina, Mali or Niger. But they, de they ended up finding their way somewhere around Alaju or somewhere in the market. And uh, it's not a good thing. Those challenges came up at the Borderless Conference. The Ghana's or National Garanta for securing the nation's revenue on the corridor is supposed to be state insurance company SIC. I on port engaged them on the sidelines of the conference. ECOWAS in 1982 brought up a protocol that says every country should appoint one institution to serve as a guarantor for the country. In Ghana, the government of Ghana appointed state insurance company SIC as a guarantor. The work of the national guarantor is to serve as security to the GRA against the loss of revenue for all cargo passing through Ghana to the neighboring countries. The work of the national guarantor is to provide a form of guarantee against any loss, against loss of revenue to the state. What it means is that 
customs of the country in which the goods are passing through are not expected to charge duties on them. And for them to be able to ensure that they don't lose out in terms of the goods finding their way into the market, which it's not supposed to be, they grant exemptions to the transitors. And in granting that exemption, somebody must state or guarantee customs that you will not lose these uh, duties and taxes. And if you lose them, I am there to support. Speaking to Iron Port on the sidelines of a borderless alliance conference in Mali, representatives of the SIC said the role of the national guarantor has been bedeviled with some challenges. The SIC representatives bemoaned instances where goods meant for the transit market ended up on the Ghanaian market. In doing the work with um, customs, Usually, the monitoring is done by all the uh, stakeholders, including SIC. If it is found in Ghana, if they are arrested, they didn't find their way into the market. All right. But in any case, Customs still works with SIC. If Customs loses the duties on those, they were not able to find those uh, goods. They were sold and the duties were not paid. SIC would have to pay and then go after the transitors. This, they said, is made possible when transit truck drivers deliberately delay on the road for the batteries of the tracking devices fixed on the trucks to go off. When drivers leave Tema Port, they have seven days to exit Ghana if they are going to Burkina Faso. I mean, when they know that there are batteries, these tracking devices use batteries. Some of them, with the intention to divert, would have to go, you know, park somewhere. And when the batteries die down, it will be very difficult to track these vehicles. He also identified the use of fake names by importers as a major challenge to the work of the national guarantor. And we also have um, fake importers. We have situations where Ghanaians will just um, use names of people who do not exist. They are not importers with the intention to divert. They assured that the SIC will continue its collaboration with agencies like the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Customs, National Security at the various exit points to prevent the loss of revenue to the state. We have um, a close collaboration with Customs and because both of us have uh, interests at stake. So there's always that constant collaboration where we can close the loopholes we do that. They stress the need for a single national guarantee system for all countries within the sub-region to reduce the cost of doing business on the Ghanaian corridor. The issue of uh, diversion of transit goods, the issue of axle load policy implementation, the issue of harassment on the corridor, plus many more, including electronic processes at our ports, like the paperless that's been practiced in Ghana, all of that came up at the conference. But what did the Ghanaian delegation take away? What have they learned? What are they coming back home to implement? And what are some of the problems they even learned out there? I believe that the problems along the corridors are many and I can divide them into three aspects. The first is the problems we have at the points of entries, that is the at seaports and, and airports, but I will focus mostly on seaports because that is where most of the commercial cargo will come. And then there are issues along the, the roads, checkpoints and what have you not. And then there will be issues rega regarding the border crossing. In Ghana, clearing procedures are a bit bulky, despite the fact that we are reforming into a paperless system. Along the corridors, we have a lot of checkpoints, lots of harassment along the corridors. And then at the border crossings, it's not as fluid as, as it has to be. We also heard that there are sections of the corridors beyond Ghana that are making trade through our ports not as conducive to business as they have to be. In Ghana, we have identified our problems, and Diaz has rightly mentioned a lot of them. And I must say that it is through this engagement with the stakeholders that we come to realize these challenges, and oftentimes we try to do something about it. I must say it is not that easy, because some of these things are policy issues. We have identified a lot of um, barriers along the corridor, which he rightly said. But we need to engage the appropriate authority. And sometimes it's as a result of a policy. That is why these barriers are being kept there, to ensure security. However, it is important that you engage properly with the key stakeholders so that they appreciate the fact that Although we need to look at security, it's still very important for us to facilitate trade. So there should indeed be a fine balance between the two. If not, we will end up making our corridor 
uncompetitive. Why is it so difficult, for instance, for the Ghana Shippers Authority to, to push for policy implementations in Ghana? Because you are a state agency and we expect it to be easier for you. But we take from the Port Authority what are some of the core challenges that the Port Authority, for instance, you you have observed some of the challenges like you rightly mentioned uh, the 200 dollars uh, bond they have to pay um it's also a, it's a challenge which add to the cost of doing business in our, on our corridor um other challenges has to do with the uh, as a load you know sometimes i don't know where the problems are actually coming from there's always that uh, discrepancy in the weight so they get to certain points and custom will have to go there and make sure they share the load before they cross uh, as i speak right now the port authority is working hard to make sure that our axle loads and that of highway authority are on the same page so very soon we'll be acquiring some way bridges to make sure that we resolve that problem of uh, different ways from the port along the corridor to the border um, then uh, the next issue is uh, the customs. Uh, uh, if you don't cross the border within a certain day, seven days you are supposed to pay 10,000. I'm sure something will be done about that. Um, Ghana is always the first to rectify uh, agreements and try to implement it. We've bent our figures in the past when we tried to implement the axle load, I think it's 2009 or so, and we lost the trade. So this time around, we told the highways that until the other countries are ready to implement it, we will not be the first to go. We'll wait and see what they are doing before we even think about it. This is very unfair, Ziad, that uh, you advocate for this corridor and you have a situation where only one country is implementing a particular policy that's supposed to help the entire uh, uh, region. Why is Ghana the only champion of this? Because the country is losing. Then that brings us back to a regional problem beyond the, 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 the ability of Ghana alone to champion, which is the lack of a harmonized implementation, not just of the axle weight regulation, but of many others. Uh, this time, we are uh, the Ghana Highway Authorities uh, briefed us about their decision to go with the axle weight regulations as long as it is implemented by by the other countries but it appears from our from our uh, from an inquiries across the region that other countries have made it clear point blank that they will not be implementing it well we have to keep on advocating because it's the right thing to do for two reasons the first one is that it creates an even a competition field for everybody. It's not just because we are based in Ghana that we want everyone else to implement. The axle weight law, uh, uh, regulation, the regional axle weight implementation has been enacted for a reason, and that is to make sure that the infrastructure are preserved for a longer duration so that the economic activity can take place longer time, so that you can get the return on the value. Sometimes when you are in your country and you are doing your bit, you think that you are doing a lot. But when you come in here, a program like this and you listen to what other countries are doing then you realize that you need to up your game from the presentations that we have listened to some of the presentation you can see that our competing ports like Togo and Abidjan are making efforts to reduce the number of days that the dwell time of cargo at the port and we could praise ourselves and say yes we've reduced the numbers the number of days but when you look at what they are doing when you compare then you realize that indeed you have a way to go and we need to even though we are doing our best we need to intensify the efforts that we are doing and it is from these programs that you can get enough statistics enough evidence to convince the policy makers that yes this is what is happening in other places. These are the best practices. For instance, the presentation on the Northern Corridor. You can see they have identified their corridor and they are making serious effort to facilitate trade. Coming from a transit terminal, you know, the, the trans has 72 days to go. Most of the time, they, they, they are able to go within 72 hours. Yeah, but sometimes we have problem with the customs, uh, print out that will be about a day or two more sometimes it comes from the gc net um, their systems tracking they will tell you the system is jammed they are not able to put the tracking systems on the 
on their tracks to go. So those are the things that causes the delay. They normally go for 72 hours. Some even if they're able to finish the same day, like the door-to-door -door, um, containers, they, they do go out within 24 hours, they are out. Everything uh, with the paperless, they say the um, processes, they finish on time and then they leave. But others too just stay there for some reasons we don't know. This kind of waiting to get more container, more uh, load before they move. And we have some who could stay as long as 53 days in, in the terminal. And those people will slap fines on them. If for no reason you remain beyond the 72 hours, you, you, are, you pay a fine. In the review of the paperless reform, uh, it's true that it's only six or seven months into implementation, but already some of the issues have revealed themselves. And it is political will that will ensure that the good intentions that have led to the creation of this system or the initiation of this reform process will continue along its own route. And this goes to all different initiatives. And we should continue the engagement and the dialogue until we are able to resolve the challenges that are affecting the transit trade. In fact, sometimes I, I don't know whether when we take decisions here, they remain here, they are not taking up to the policy makers. So we come back again and talk about the same issue. And it appears as if there is no political will, like we keep saying. But I think that beyond this, we should be able to engage policy makers to, to make sure that they do what they have to do to make the trade very lucrative. So as we go along, we need to look at what is happening out there, around us, and uh, engage in best practices, you know. So if we have a policy that is not beneficial to our cause, it's important for us to look at it and see how it can be reviewed in the interest of the people who are supposed to be the beneficiaries of these policies so that we can promote the trade that we are all looking forward to. So we're hoping that all these deliberations will help uh, make the trade in Ghana and West Africa in general the best for the cyber region. And I should remind you again though that the next borderless conference will be coming up here in Ghana, Accra to be specific, just next year, Ghana will be hosting the 8th edition of the Borderless Conference, the annual Borderless Conference. We will all be looking up uh, for that particular conference and hope that by then some of the issues would have been addressed. I on Port returns after the break. Hello. Good morning. This is Samantha Wendy. I am sending a purchase order from SA2 Ventures International. Our policy for new supplies is two containers to start with, but you must deliver within 30 days. Don't worry at all. I'm going to get you the four containers within 30 days or less. Bye. To get his pineapple slices from his country to his clients overseas, Mr. Appiah and his representatives have to complete a number of regulatory compliance procedures to various international trade stakeholders. Hey, Grandma, what's going on? Get it right? I mean, how? How? Hey! Using single window, Mr. Abia has completed all his international trade procedures through one portal. He has registered his company information, applied for the necessary permit, certificates and licenses, and all that remains is for him to get a text alert for clearance and movement of goods. And that's how simple facilitating international trade could be in a single window environment. You can offer competitive services to your trading partners in China, America, even here in a simpler, faster, and cost-effective way. Single window, the only way to Ghana's economic growth is in our hands. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing, or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality gold oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance, and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with gold synthetic oil. We are your champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always choose gold. Ashinipankasa. 
Goel, good energy. Welcome back from the break. Still watching Eye on Port. Next up, our local news and activities happening in and around the port and maritime industry. The Ghana Shippers Authority has mounted intense campaign to sensitize stakeholders on the need to reduce the cost of doing business by reducing the marriages, which is a major cost in trade at Ghana's ports. This time, the Ghana Shippers Authority has organized a business seminar on demarriage for the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI. This is the second seminar on demarriage, as the first was organized for the Ghana Union of Traders Association, GUTA. Participating agencies for the seminar included the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Ship Owners and Agents Association of Ghana, SOAG, Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, and the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, GIF. The high cost of doing business remains one of the the biggest disincentive to the growth of import and exports business in Ghana, with a major cost item being the marriage. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Benonita Bismarck, explained that $75 million was paid as demerged, whereas 48 million Ghana cities was paid as pot rent in 2017 alone. The high cost of doing business remains one of the biggest disincentives to the growth of import and export businesses in Ghana. A major cost item is container demerit. She encouraged members of the association to take keen interest in measures that would help them avoid payment of container demerit and rent in the country. The government of His Excellency Nana Adedankwa Akufuado has stated its commitment to reducing the cost of doing business at our seaports through very bold initiatives and interventions in the cargo clearance process with the ultimate objective of bringing the needed reliefs for shippers. The Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Ghana Industries, Setchum Akwabwa, indicated that the marriage had a negative effect on their businesses. Hence, a better understanding of the clearance process was needed to address the challenge. Something that is avoidable, we should avoid it. And therefore, it is very important that we get to know the dynamics of the game such that where we can avoid, we avoid, so that we reduce our cost of doing business. West Blue Consulting. West Blue Consulting, the technical support providers for customs in the implementation of the Ghana National Single Window, has been awarded the most innovative IT consulting and technology firm at the 2018 West Africa Business Excellence Awards. The awards recognize the industry's merits and set a benchmark for excellence while rewarding innovative ideas that have pushed the boundaries of what is possible to attract investors into West Africa. The Minister for Aviation, Cecilia Abna Dapa, charged organizations to strive to achieve business excellence within the corporate environment to become competitive as government endeavors to reduce the cost of doing business at the nation's ports. Under this leadership, the government has introduced initiatives such as the One District, One Factory, e-business registration system, paperless port clearance system, digital addressing system, strategic anchor industries, industrial parks, and the national identification system, which are aimed at creating jobs for the prosperity of our people. After receiving the award, the general manager of operations for West Blue Consulting, Kinsley Abeye, said the company will be rolling out some products to improve trade facilitation in the country. West Blue is moving to a very higher stage and I'm very sure in the coming months everybody will see the, the new products that we are currently developing. Yes, and I'm very sure when we start rolling them out, we will all see the stage we've got into. And I'm very sure we we're going to improve trade facilitation in Ghana. He said the contributions of West Blue in the past towards the improvement of the Ghana trade and revenue generation cannot be underestimated. We've worked so hard to get to where we are now. And so it's no surprise that uh, the, during the, this year's West Africa Excellence Award, we've been given this prestigious award. 
As part of efforts to transform Ghana sports and make it number one in Africa, a high-level delegation from various stakeholders have paid a working visit to DP World in Dubai, the company which recently took over West Blue Consulting to undertake the single window project in Ghana. The visit was to observe how Dubai's single window system operates and share ideas on how to improve trade facilitation in Ghana. The delegation on the trip were representatives from the office of the Vice President, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA, Ghana Revenue Authority, Customs Division, Shipping Lines and West Blue Consulting. Areas discussed during the visit included the scope of custom integration with manifest system, understanding current custom integration, and access limitations and solutions. The representatives also had first-hand information about proposed manifest system with standardized format, challenges, core modules for early delivery, essential add-ons for early delivery, new manifest system, future dependencies, and additional add-ons and future roadmaps. The stakeholders met with the management team of DP World and were briefed on how Dubai Customs have successfully become a robust player in the field of trade facilitation. The management team at DP World reiterated their assurances to the government of Ghana in enhancing the already started single window program and the implementation of modern custom methods such as risk management. The team from Ghana also praised DP World for giving them the opportunity to inspect their system and operations in Dubai. They urged them to expedite action to deploy the their robust system in Ghana to enhance trade, boost government's revenue, and reduce the cost and time of doing business in Ghana. So we say congratulations to the Team West Blue for sweeping uh, those awards there and uh, also making those trips all the way to Dubai to learn a lot more to improve Ghana's trade. Next up are international news, and that includes a new island that has joined the International Maritime Organization. The International Maritime Organization, IMO, has welcomed a new member, the Republic of Nauru. On May 14, 2018, Nauru deposited its instrument of acceptance to the IMO Convention with the United Nations Depository, becoming IMO's 174th member state. With an area of 21 square kilometers, Nauru is the world's smallest island nation with a population of just under 10,000 inhabitants. This developing country is situated northeast of Australia, some 42 kilometers south of the equator. In a separate announcement, the IMO informed that Monaco has acceded to the IMO treaty covering emissions from ship exhaust and energy efficiency. According to the latest edition of International Association of Dry Cargo Ship Owners, Ball Carrier Casualty Report, a total of 53 ball carriers over 10,000 dead weight tonnage have been identified as total losses over the past 10 years. A staggering 202 crew members have lost their lives as consequence or on average 20 lives lost per year during the reporting period from 2008 to 2017. The highest loss of life has been attributed to cargo failure, totaling 101 lives lost or 50% of the total loss of lives resulting from nine casualties. The most common reported cost of ship losses has been grounding, accounting for 41.5% of total losses, followed by flooding, accounting for 15.1%, and unknown causes in the cases of six ships that claim 61 lives, among them the two casualties in 2017. The Paris Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, Paris MOU, unveiled its plans to focus attention on marine air pollution in the near future. This development anticipates the new maximum limits for sulfur in ships fuel oil, which is due to enter into force on January 1, 2020. The new focus on air pollution will comprise of an information campaign in the form of a letter of warning. When cleaning your vehicle by valeting, steaming, waxing or polishing, make sure the engine is also sound. Servicing your vehicle with gold synthetic oil and any quality gold oil massages the engine, removes deposit, protects it from wear and tear for longer lasting performance and makes your vehicle fuel pumped. Made for diesel and super engines. Remember, after every 15,000 kilometers of enjoying your ride, service your engine with gold synthetic oil. We are your champion. That's why I, Azuma Nelson, three times world boxing champion and a patriot, always choose Goel. Ashinipankasa. Goel, good energy. 
So we say congratulations to the team West Blue for sweeping uh, those awards there and uh, also making those trips all the way to Dubai to learn a lot more to improve Ghana's trade. Schedules of vessels sitting in the port, those at Anchorage, those also expected in the coming week, including fishing harbor vessels, as well as Bank of Ghana exchange rates are all next on your screens. Next up are your comments and that includes people sending us loads of VIN numbers to find out uh, the values of their cars and all of that. And so at this point I have to say a big thank you to Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, particularly Baba Musa. Uh, Baba Musa has been helping us get the values, those values that we bring all the time to you. Baba Musa will say God bless you. Enoch Donko says he holds a diploma in cargo handling and passed ITA air rates and marketing, therefore asking if there is any vacancy for him. Well, Enoch, there are a lot of organizations operating in the maritime industry. Kindly take advantage and submit your CV to them. And who knows, you could be giving a chance. Papa Sly says, please, Iron Port, I need the duty fees on the following cars. Chevrolet Cruise with the following VIN number. Chevrolet Equinox with the following VIN number. Chevrolet Traverse with the following VIN number. Chevrolet Sonic with the following VIN number. And finally, 2009 Land Rover and Range Rover Sports with the following chassis number. Papa Sly, the estimated duty for the Chevrolet Cruise is 19,600 Ghana cities. That of the Chevrolet Equinox is 25,500 Ghana cities. The Chevrolet Traverse is 47,900 cities. The 2014 Chevrolet Sonic is 18,600 Ghana cities. And the 2009 Land Rover Range Rover Sport is 77,000. 1,900 Ghana cities. Well, you also have to note, Papa Sly, that these are tentative duty values and may vary by the time you are ready to clear your cars based on factors including exchange rates and so on. That's it for this week's episode of Ion Pod. We thank you uh, for watching the program. Also, thanks to the entire crew uh, for backing up the program and thanks particularly to Baba Musa for helping us with all the custom duties and values we disturb you with, but you always at our service. Thank you once again and thank you folks 